Hey Google, can you kill kids in Fallout 2? <laughs> you, you've just why you've just triggered so many devices who are listening in. <laughs> uh, do, do, do. welcome to Diet Log the Gamer Matters podcast. Welcome, welcome, yes. welcome to the most friendliest podcast here. Episode seventy seven. Ah, oh, love what? Last week was 76. I, I didn't did a single joke one. No. Because it was the PS5 special. <laughs> the PS5 it, special. It was not appropriate. Man. <laughs> and apparently, we blew our budget for guests that time to the point that our guest for this week. <laughs> for it's no one. Episode, yeah. Yeah, it's no one. Or oh, again, as I put it last time, we put a sandbag on that on that chair. Uh, introducing the panel, we have the usual guys, uh, Daniel over there. Hello. And the other side, Anan. Hello. Good mic, Anan, today. Uh, nice. Uh, the one one episode reserve have increased Anan's budget for mic. <laughs> as, as, as speaking of increased budget of mic, uh, this is Amirul Mekronos Ashraf speaking. So... What have we done in the past two, or rather four weeks ago? <laughs> Man, it's been a while. And at least... Um, what... like, like, um, oh. the, the word is um. Mm. <laughs> no, my, my worry is that our, our Malay will be leaking all over because we have been doing some side hustles. <laughs> uh... Oh, yeah. We've been doing some side hustles. For those who don't know, uh, check out the old Gamer Malaya channel. We've reverted into full bahasa since we've moved Diadotlog from there to a new channel on YouTube. You can check that out, Diadotlog, the Game Matters podcast. And yeah, we, the, the most of the time we've been speaking more Malay for whatever reason. I mean, for work reasons. Lah. For professional reasons. Professional Malay talking experience actual actual <laughs> actual journalism in Mali. wow wow uh, uh, what's mempertabatkan enhancing mempertabatkan bahasa uh, you know you you not propagate you propagate yeah you propagate the 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 good word that is Malay which doesn't make sense on the, on here on the dot law because we we should be speaking full English but anyway Hopefully, the Malay won't be leaking too much here. Uh, Probably not. <laughs> yeah. Plus, it's kind of holiday season right now. You guys have any plans for holiday? There's a holiday? Technically, it's a holiday. I mean... <laughs> we... I mean, it's every day is a holiday. <laughs> I mean, if you ask... Those are people. I mean, if you ask, uh, what's the... Uh, uh, do the people at G- at Game of Matters take breaks? Then you, the answer is what kind of break you mean? We can take any time. But yeah, outside of us, it is a holiday season. Lunar New Year. Some people like to celebrate Valentine's. Mike, what's your plan for this holiday season? <laughs> My plan is to continue with this show because we have any things to talk about because I don't think anyone has any plans. <laughs> uh, oh, save, trying to save whatever the rambling we can have right now. So, uh, who wants to start? Or do you want mm. me to start with my ram- what I did the past two weeks? Ah, uh, sure. Why not? Go ahead. Let's start with the simple one. The one that is an okay experience. Though, I don't even expect much about it. Uh, it's this little game called Wave of the Apocalypse. Earthblood. Figure out which way the colon and the dashes are. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
Malas. <laughs> I mean, the I won't talk much about the game, but it's interesting to me. The big takeaway for me about this game is that this is the developers who have experience with making sports games, and also stealth and RPGs. You expect them to make an action RPG with stealth mechanics where the stealth and the RPG shines. Apparently, that's not the case for Werewolf the Apocalypse of Blood. The game is more action than RPG. It, it weirdly feels good to press buttons in the game. And stealth is kind of like... It's, it's a bit coarse for me for reasons I will explain later because I've played a better stealth game. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder which one. If it hasn't been on the thumbnail yet, I don't know. Hmm. But yeah, the big takeaway from that game, uh, Werewolf: The Apocalypse of Blood, is that man being a werewolf is fun. You just get to kill people, and if you fail your staff segments, you just get to rage out and just have more fun, which is a weird kind of gameplay loop. Oh, you fail, you get mad at the game, you get. Uh, what you say? Dopamine. You get the release of anger because, God damn it, I almost cleared that section, but I didn't. So now I kill you all, and blood splatters everywhere in glorious textures. <laughs> it's weird, man. The game's weird. If you think like, uh, you know how Warhammer IP is kind of like in. Uh, it's an established IP. People know about it, but when it comes to video games, it's kind of like a hit or miss. Let me introduce to you, you the World of Darkness IP, which includes Vampire the Masquerade. This is the same universe. The games are both oh. cult hits. Yeah, that's why it's Werewolf the Apocalypse, because it's also the same universe as Vampire the Masquerade. And I can look it up. There are more weird things in the world of darkness. Let me check. World of darkness. Oh no 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 no! I don't want to go to the website. Let me check the uh, wiki. Those are the two main. You see the main famous games, tabletop games from the IP. But there are more. So is it really two then? Yeah. So it's part of the law then. Uh within the game. I don't see any vampires, which is unfortunate. I oh. hope no, because the, the there is clear reasoning. Because in vamp uh in the world of darkness, the way it it operates is that vampires are in the masquerade. They pretend to be humans and live among us, and they do their politicking within themselves in the cities. Meanwhile, werewolves are recluse people. I mean, one thing they can change into wolves. And also, they kind of like eco terrorists, where the 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 they, there's there's kind of like a long law reasons why they are fighting against uh we say oil and gas companies. But the short gist of it is that they want to keep the world from getting polluted, which accelerates what they call the ap- apocalypse. So basically, they present themselves as like the antibody to the world to the to Gaia. They call it. Oh yeah, let me read out some of the other IPs within the world of darkness. Vampire the Masquerade, Werewolf the Apocalypse, Mage the Ascension, Wraith the Oblivion, Changeling the Dreaming, Vampire the Dark Ages, Werewolf the Wild West, oh man, this is kind of weird, Kindred of the East, uh, Mage the Sorcerer's Crusade, uh, I think it keeps on repeating and repeating and repeating. <coughs> Yeah, it's it's kind of well. There's basically if you like a, a horror team, uh, tabletop, this this IP, the World of Darkness, is actually pretty cool. But if you want to experience it in video game form, uh, no triple A level of quality has been reached yet. Even Vampire: The Masquerade Bloodlines is like cult hit. It has its bugs. It has its moments, but it has a lot of bugs. Oh yeah, that's werewolf. Pick it oh, up on sale. What's your verdict? <laughs> uh, I say pick it up on sale. 
<laughs> like the half of the game is kind of bit boring where you just keep on sneaking in industrial complexes like a lot but halfway through the game gets a bit horror-ish and becomes like Resident Evil 4 a bit literally mm. it's La- Las Plagas it's a Las Plagas situation <laughs> Resident Evil t- kind of thing I uh <laughs> Imagine a very evil corporation, a very evil oil and gas corporation that wants to exploit the world by making people turn into Las Plagas. Because everyone can consume oil and gas products in their cars. Then <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. please, okay. please don't show this game to the Lanyard people. That's all I have to say. Oh, they have people. Oh, I see. I know. <laughs> this game. I is, get it. This game is very one-sided in their in their message. <laughs> no room for interpretation. Oil and gas are evil, exploitative companies. <laughs> uh, that's where we'll the apocalypse. If uh, some of you listeners don't get it, uh, this is regards to a company with a P, in the production. <laughs> <laughs> let let's let's just be blunt. It's another oil and gas corporation within here, which have very what do you say, uh, prominence. With yep, <laughs> in Malaysia, yeah, the employees are known to wear their lanyards proudly yeah. in KLCC. It's like so a... if you go to KLCC, you see those lanyards, you know. Okay, these are the guys. Oh, look at <laughs> those guys! They have their lanyards out. Hmm. <laughs> And you know the color of the layers. Oh, yeah, that's that's definitely them. Mm. Charge more, charge more. They have the money. They have more money. Charge more. Uh, moving on from uh eco terrorism to bio terrorism. <laughs> Real uh, terrorism. Military. Wine terrorism. Mm. Military, but... what happened when the Las Plagas didn't turn into Las Plagas, but it turned into like you say technically an apocalypse after a flake? <laughs> uh, there's two points here for Division Two. Let's just combine it into the full Division Two power hour. Let's go. All right. Okay. So, for those not in the know, me. Well, me and Nandan are now in what I like to call uh, the d- Division Binder. Where, well, for me, lah, I don't think Nandan is a very fond of Division Binder. I've been playing this game for now almost 76 hours. <laughs> so that's like three days. Three days of gameplay in span of like two weeks. So yeah, I can't stop playing this game. So before I go to my point, I think Nandan should go for the because because my one because you you were cutting off again because, because my one is full of disappointment so okay oh no because I think Anand's one is more disappointing <laughs> <laughs> man are we just gonna rant over division two okay Anand go first what what's your what's your your beef with division okay my gripe is uh like my main concern is how do i have fun in division 2 because i'll be honest uh i redownloaded the game recently because i played during the open beta so long time ago so now i i got it uh and then redownload and i when i got it i'm like okay uh, let's just start uh try to find a a loop like a, a proper game loop that i can enjoy and I haven't found it until now. I, I don't know how these guys play like hundreds of hours. Tell me, please. How do I have fun <laughs> in Division 2? So boring. Okay, what know? level are you? What I mean, I level read, are like, you in? Level 9. 9. Just, just play like a few hours. Uh, I can't really have to use this word. Tapi, uh, the game gets better when you play more. <laughs> I I mean I know I'm aware of that, but at the same time, how do I get through the slog until I find the fun in Division Two? My personal answer is simple and 
kind of bit disappointing, but it works. Number go big. Number go big. <laughs> Yeah, big loot, big loot, big bigger number, shorter kill time, good, more bigger loot, bigger number. Yeah, okay. I, I mean, mean, that's that's all the oh, and the other thing that I kind of look forward to is the sometimes random uh cosmetics that they, they can throw away when you looting. Okay, I'm I see. weirdly I'm I got excited when I got a new flannel shirt. This is the sort of game. <laughs> I'm excited for a new, what you say, uh, a new cap, new snow cap, some some good old green sneakers, or whatever, <laughs> and baggy shorts. Oh man! Still cosmetics, free random cosmetics. It works for me. It's the those kind of things, lah. And then yeah. and then just work it. What I but. The 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 what you say the optional stuff is kind of bit a bit you see I I I can relate if you get bored with the optional stuff but when it comes to like the set pieces story missions those are kind of well designed though I yeah. would recommend playing with a buddy to get more of it when solo is sometimes like, like that there's quality in there like oh the audio comes in the music pipes in even though you kind of like. You know what to expect after you do your first or your first five of them, and it keeps on the same loop. But the the designs of the levels itself are like, okay, okay, I see they put their work there. All right, cool. <laughs> yep. I mean, but, uh, I understand because I also found the uh, the combat is good. The combat is fine. The level design, I'm okay with it. It's just like the in between actions. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's it's like it feels empty. Uh, maybe I should play with a friend. I don't know. Play, play with me later. I just level up first. <laughs> sure. Uh, play solo boring lah. Uh, yeah, I'm probably over level or something, but I uh, can just yeah. hop in. I mean, yeah, you only uh, you only hit the level cap. Yeah, so I know. <laughs> the the for me the fun bit is the 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 quietness during the downtime, which is weird, but. The way that the division and the division two, I do love the way they design the world. That that is weirdly uh intriguing to explore, just to see oh what happened here, and then you hear the the chiming guitar playing at the back. It's kind of like calming for whatever reason. <laughs> That's the way. Like oh, I I can I can peace myself with, relax for a bit. Take in the size and then big number. I want big number. Go now, <laughs> drone. Get me the big number. So the the fun skills with number. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay, I get it. <laughs> This it's a bit like Borderlands, lah. Basically. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I understand it. Okay. Uh, I I'll just log through then. Like I just find my way to the fun zone. Yeah, don't 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 bother with messing around. Oh, what kind of build should I be? No, those those discussion are reserved for at the end game. Right, right oh. now you just getting there. You just get enough of the get the level cast, and then and then you stop and figure out. Okay, how do I build my character? So, so I guess we can talk about the end game now. So, the end game. Um, is this newest expansion which in- reintroduces the game to New York? Oh, uh, oh, by the way, you mark spoilers on the docket. So, which part will yes. be spoilers? The whole bit. <laughs> okay, the whole bit is spoiler. Okay. Yeah. After yeah. So, chine. Let's start with uh. Okay, the game set in uh Washington D.C. where you have to save the president and then. Here's the first story spoiler. Like, oh no, the president is actually evil because he has signed a bunch of uh, what this military contractors to kill, what to kill the division, you know, the agents of your company, lah. Mm-hmm. So we go to New York because there is like a, a problem there because we wanted to kill the the previous game's antagonist, uh, a rogue agent. So we go there, we kill him, and then thing out. The president was actually around there the whole time, just to because 
one of our uh, like I think division punya boss uh, turn coat. She joins the this paramilitary punya side. I think like have you have you played division again? The the girl apa nama dia? Fei Lao. The the first person we met when we started yeah, yeah, playing yeah, yeah. on the first division, yeah, she turns evil Ooh, because oh no, yes. the whole game about <laughs> sleeper agents that has a feature to turn to the dark side into the dark zone has turn rogue <laughs> has turn rogue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is like the right thing is that uh, okay. So, so we went to New York. Because by the time we went to New York for the first time, uh, it was fine. But then when we come to the second game, uh, that the uh, the division team there, I think messed up badly because they had to move uh to Wall Street so that they set up the second base. Uh, that's where our our main our former boss turns coat and then she kills the president, which is actually a very long story spoiler. And then, with the most disappointing end to the like this story arc, and she for me she dies to like because I have this very like max powered shotgun, thanks to my <laughs> to, thanks to my ridiculous end game grind, and she dies like in five shots. <sighs> I mean, you've played the RPG good then. You've all, <laughs> you've been max yourself. <laughs> To a good fight. If you ask the the folks, apa, you you've asked the uh, the real hardcore sweaty boys about your final boss performance, they could have just say, yeah, you can you could have shoot one shot eh, if you do this and this 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 this. But they do the sabar when you. I approve. <laughs> I approve. But yeah, yeah, like this is such a disappointing end uh, to this like very nice story arc, uh, and like the first game you help her, and then in the second game she turns cold, and then at last last she just she she is just a pushover because because like uh I can say that the grind to get to her itself is already terrible lah. Uh, so but all her other like her minions all have their own gimmicks uh, Like this one guy, he has the power to hologram himself. So that you don't know where which one is the real person. That's cool. Second guy, dia ada this macam like uh, electric grenades that it can shock you. That's also cool. And then when you come to the big boss herself, nah, nothing. <laughs> wait, wait. Are you say, wait? Are you describing Metal Gear Solid or Division Two again? <laughs> mm. <laughs> is it my target solid three you discuss do do one of the henchmen will die if you just leave the game for how many I hours I wish nah <laughs> tak ada there is da, tapi there is one yang memang gila lah very religious that is the apa uh, the fire the fire punya guys tu oh basically the fury lah <laughs> nah the fury <laughs> I will not let the division destroy I will be like okay just jump up, literally just use the same shotgun to kill her again. I mean, you've played the game <laughs> good then. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Uh, betul kan? I mean, yeah, 70 hours. Like, yeah. my my build is based on, like, their, I think they call it, like, the wolf punya ni. So, you will also get, like, this uh, explosive crossbow. Oh, my God. Uh, so, macam, betul lah. My one is actually quite stacked when you think about it. But are you a glass cannon then? Oh yeah, Sorry because about. uh my uh yeah my armor, I because like I've seen people with your armor like three million uh hit points or five million. My one is just one point one. Hold on, because end game number reaches millions. Yes. <laughs> Big the f- number. Big what number. the hell? Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it gets rid of My one is only one point one. Freaking number. <laughs> My one's only 1.1 because my one has the ability to if every time I kill someone, I dapat regen balik the armor. Yeah, yeah. That sounds that sounds a quality build. <laughs> like, uh, uh, you know the your, your usual archetypal build that you can use? Mm-hmm. Uh, low, low, low HP, glass cannon, but you get regen or port kills. So that's how you survive. Keep, keep, on, the, keep on getting into the snowball. Keep the train tapi, rolling. Tapi, 
Yeah, but the problem is, can like I've re- or basically this is the highest, the high end kill because they are going to introduce re- more expansions in year two. Mm-hmm. Wait, is this year two? Year three, salah. Sorry, because it uh. came out in twenty nineteen. Yeah, yeah, it came out in twenty nineteen. So it's year three, punya expansion. But like, so I've done all the expansions in the span of seventy six hours, and then I get the ending. The ending of this expansion is, oh, uh, oh no. But I think they one, I think like one of the story beats they say that is they are going to do what Star Wars fail to do, which is a uh, the grey, much like, like the grey agent, basically, like, like bukan raw, bukan good pun, tapi in the middle. Ah, uh, yes. It's a good call because because another story beat that uh the the main the first main protagonist what is that he has launched his own network, a raw agent network. So tak tahu siapa baik atau jahat now, which I actually like. That is a good. That is a good. Apa dah? Good way to cakap kau to bring in like another story bit lah. Now you never know. And I think I will take questions now. Any questions? <laughs> Have you any interest to try the read? Oh the the. I have now night like level thirty of the rate. <laughs> okay, is never it the, mind the, then. The tower, the tower rate. Nah, nah, nah. That that's also the normal rate, right? Or is it? Oh, the normal rate. Normal rate the is interesting. One? It's interesting. Yeah, I've done like once. Sabar, right? Rando. So we kept we kept dying the cat in the middle because. <laughs> Wow, no, no more voice chat. <laughs> oh boy, it's, it's hard. Uh, hold on. Does it have puzzles? Ah, <laughs> there was one like there was one. I remember the the part where we died. Ni, it was uh, dua orang kena stand on like this uh, per macam EMP oh, You have man. to stay there. Platform tapi you puzzles. get damage. Ah, uh, you 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 still get damage juga because the is an EMP. Tapi you have to stay there for like a minute. Macam aduh. If you don't have a tank there, bye-bye. That's why. Right. Mm. Aku gas can, I can, since I am a gas kind of build, so I keep dying to god damn this. I hate the MP puzzles. I see, I see. So you really need a crew for that one. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Oh yeah, that's that, that tower thing, right? The, what do you call oh, it? The tower thing is, the tower tu, yeah, it is like, A mini raid lah, just tw- ten floors of raiding. So, saga, that one is also quite hard because it is random, like it is basically their version of a road light. <laughs> you don't know which are you gonna get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds. That sounds. Okay, but yeah, all all of the stuff you say are all end game stuff, right? So, man. I cannot remember how many hours I've put until I reached the level cap. The last time I logged into Ubisoft Connect, ah, uh, they forgot the play time count, so I don't want to install to check. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the it it kind of like the the fun bit is really at the end weirdly enough for games like this. Yeah, uh, when you finish the yeah when you finish the what's it called the first. Yeah, the first end game, the the Washington punya part, and then when you download the expansion which is on sale right now, mm-hmm. it is fun lah. It's forty levels basically. Okay, good to know. So you still recommend Division after all the, despite the uh, anticlimactic end. Despite yeah, despite the weak ass ending, and uh, I will still recommend it because it is such a good game. It will be better with friends, but I have slogged to seventy hours <laughs> alone. And where do you Once, play yeah. it on? The, the Xbox Series. I, mm. <laughs> See, you put it on yourself. If you are on PC, you can help Anan already. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, And oh no, the fire just started on my place. <laughs> there, there's a there's a raid at the back there. You oh can, no, that's a red. You can hear the 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 electronic twang. Ah, <laughs> uh, Ben. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll look into uh, checking out Division 2's expansion. If maybe lah, I, I'm not committing myself. 
Even though like February for me, I'm not looking into any new games. Uh, fortunately, the games I'm looking forward to is on the platform that I don't have. <laughs> so I have the <laughs> yes, bye. Uh, <laughs> so I have the liberty to check on stuff like on the backlog and stuff like that. Stuff that I may have missed in the past year or something like that. Yeah, that's the the vision to power over then. <laughs> Either we stop at Division 2 or we're gonna continue the Ubisoft straight next podcast. <laughs> oh man, I forgot. We always have the Ubisoft combo going. Let's see. We've just started the combo. We'll see next next episode. Let's see, let's see. Hmm. But for more... uh, You see, not a lightning. How about we talk about murder but less... More calculated rather than mass murder in division. <laughs> uh, I may have played a certain game called Hitman Three. Not to be confused with the original Hitman, <laughs> original Hitman Three. Oh, which oh. is also apa nama Blood Money? Oh, is it? no, 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 no. There was no Hitman Three. <laughs> the third Hitman game was called Hitman Contracts. Aha! <laughs> the trick question is whether it was Hitman 2 or Hitman 2 Silent Assassin. That was the only numbered Hitman before. The rest are just subtitles. Like Hitman Codename 47, Hitman 2 Silent Assassin, Hitman Contracts, Blood Money, Absolution. And then the World of Assassination trilogy, the reboot trilogy. Essentially Hitman 2016, Hitman 2 and Hitman 3. And yeah. The game has properly ended and man uh it started a bit wonky let's just let uh, let people know the there was promise for your know, players who own the past hitman games to import their levels into hitman 3 for free but unfortunately on pc uh because of the change of platforms from steam to epic game store I O cannot uh, cannot get the import feature to work on launch, Oof. which caused a bit of a ruckus. But then I O compensate with actually, uh, making the first Hitman game, the DLC to access all levels of Hitman One in Hitman Three, free for those who pay, who buy Hitman Three on launch. There was a launch window. And for Hitman 2, the DLC for that was mighty cheap, like 80% off, just to compensate for their boo-boo. They are now working for the import feature. But if you were like me, who has no... uh, Basically, I have Hitman 1. I don't have Hitman 2 on PC. Most of my collection is actually on on PS4. I bought the recent DLCs <laughs> on PS4. I plan to continue on PS4. But then, I look at the pricing of the game. Uh, thanks to regional pricing, Epic Game Store, with all the DLCs, was actually cheaper. I got like less than 200. If I just buy Hitman 3 at, on PS4, uh, it was like 249. Which is, uh, I'm I'm looking forward to Epic Games Store supporting Ringgit Malaysia properly, so that I don't have to make some mental gymnastics on how many, how much do I have to compensate because of, uh, the regional exchange when you punch into Google, is not exactly like that. It's kind of a bit more, so you're paying more than you expect most of the time, but still. I'm I've made more value for buying Hitman 3 on PC fresh. I have hmm. all the levels. Well, except the upcoming stuff because I don't get the deluxe. Uh, anyway, Hitman 3, Hitman 3. Uh for those who don't know, Hitman 3 is basically Hitman but better. And that could just be the review there. It can be end there. It's still <laughs> Hitman Hitman, Hitman 2 was great. It's a great leap. But Hitman 3 is more like they're just refining. They're just polishing stuff up. Because in terms of mechanics-wise, there's not like a major change. Like, oh, they, they, 
uh, in the pre-release, they say, oh, they put in shortcuts that can only open on the other side. <laughs> uh, basically, Dark Souls style shortcuts, but after playing it, it doesn't really change the game that much. To the contrary of the fans' reaction when it was revealed. Uh, it's it's nice touch, but it's not like revolutionary in Hitman terms. And there's a new camera. You can hack stuff, but it's very level specific. You can take pictures. It's not technically a photo mode. So, it's still... I, I wish I could have 47 selfies, but... We'll see. It's not yet. It's not there yet. But the fun of Hitman 3 is basically the levels itself. These are the best... Well, there are six levels in Hitman 3. Five of them are the best in the series. <laughs> I'm totally throwing one under the bus. So, okay. At this point, I'm gonna spoil the best... Uh, I'm gonna spoil the levels itself. Because up to this point, you've heard everything you need to know about Hitman 3. Hitman 3 is good. You can check the review on GameMatters.com. It's Hitman but better. And if you have the past levels as well, it's just a good time to play through all of them right now. It's a blast. Yeah, murdering, it can be fun, especially if you like to, like, uh, plan properly who to kill, where to do it, which area, or if you just plan to murder everyone and massacre them with one hit by putting in, like, 10 hours to drag everybody, like, everybody, literally, under a great press and then press the button to squash them <laughs> into wine. <laughs> Oh, hey, that that sounds so wrong out of context. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's right. Oh man, that look, Hitman 3 have made people or oh, have probably put some Hitman streamers on a watch list somehow. <laughs> like oh, really, how how do you throw people uh out the balcony? <laughs> oh wait, wait, this is Hitman 3. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Google stuff like uh how do I kill people with fire? How do I poison? <laughs> drink uh what else where where to find fire axe uh okay this is spoilers this is spoiler stuff okay uh let's go let's go <laughs> you've seen dubai i've shown you dubai right yep dubai yep. is one of the good examples of the they're doing the same thing it's a party we've seen party levels before but they've made it smaller but taller like, there are multiple levels that you have to climb through. And there are multiple, like, the way the design is, can you, when you first do the full round, it can be confusing. I don't know how you guys can keep up with me just scooting around the place. You guys can follow the, you say, the areas that have been placed around. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's like, oh, this area is the kitchen, but then there's an access to the secret penthouse area at the top level. And apparently, if there's one moment, if you, there's like, if you start at a specific place, I think it was being a security guard in the security area where where you can grab a banana <laughs> and a wet floor sign to cause people to sleep. You can start from there. You can just shoot the two targets and then boom. Nice second speed run. It has that kind of detail of if you know the map enough, you can complete it in seconds. But wow. to get there, the level of knowledge that you need to like map yourself around. Oh, the this area maps around here, maps around. If you think Dark Souls have a lot of like cool, what you say, uh, what you say, level design where it just wraps around. I mean, Hitman 3 is literally that. It is a design of buildings. <laughs> and Dubai is very well designed. In ter- despite the small size, in terms of wide width, it packs a lot of st- nook and crannies to, to search. I mean, there's like... I found a place to find a gold bar, which is stacked actually very f- in f- at the start of the first area, but... There's a way to get from like from the fifth floor. There's like staircases, and then there's a leaf access, and then you get the secret access to the gold bar, which then loops back to the starting area. Oh, okay, cool, nice. 
Dartmoor, which is the England level where, uh, where you take, uh, where you technically have to kill a person who pretends to die. As in, there is a, uh, there's a, there's a funeral coming up, but it's a fake funeral. But you, you are supposed to make that funeral real, essentially. But then you arrive there. There's already another Buddha in the family. Oh boy. So from there, you can also follow this vicious story, which is actually, what is it? Which is like guided storylines that you can follow. You totally play as a detective. 47, the investigator. Go search for clues. And then once you've made up your mind, go report back, accuse one of the... Uh, one of the family members is basically like Cluedo now. <laughs> and man, the devil looks cozy because, you know, it's a it's an English mansion. You go inside there, it's basically dark, but then you see God rays from the outside coming in. It just looks cozy. This is not powered by ray tracing, by the way. Just using SSR and still looks magnificent in a lot of angles. And then you go to my favorite level, Berlin. Man, Berlin... Berlin is so great and the only re- way to talk about it is to spoil it. So, if you, <laughs> that's the only way. If you still are listening in and you intend to play Hitman 3, shut up, just skip ahead. Skip ahead. Don't, don't spoil yourself this because this is one of the most satisfying twists i found in Hitman. So, first... uh. The level itself starts weirdly because there's no briefing. There's no like, oh, this is what you have to do. No, 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 no targets, no, 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 nothing. You just there for story reasons. And then you started off, uh, there's a petrol station at the other end. I thought it was, oh, okay, is that, is that the place that you need to go? Oh, are we going into a town? And then the petrol station has nothing. It was just scenery. It was actually oh. the other side of the road, which goes like into like a forest uh, pathway. And then the other side is a decommissioned nuclear power plant that have been turned into a clubhouse. That's <laughs> where right? you have to go. And then the whole... And then the whole mission then becomes that, oh, you, you were supposed to connect with some other handler. Uh, not Diana, another person, but she's not around, and then that apparently things have been compromised. And right now, if, for story reasons, forty seven is now against the ICA, the agency that he he is employed. Let's just put it there. So basically, now the whole club area has been scouted by ICA agents, basically other hitmen, and the bit. And the start of the game, and uh, the start of the level, and the level name is called Apex Predator. I thought, okay, are we going to be hunted here? Because the IC are scrolling around the area. No, 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 no. For story reasons, the first guy you meet is one of the IC agents. It's an easy kill. Kill that guy, and then you get the earpiece, and now you are hunting them. That's the Apex <laughs> Predator. Now, the game goes that you do not know where the target are, the targets are. You do not know how many you have to kill. But you have to kill enough to have them go away. And then you have the earpiece on you. So you keep on hearing their talkity chitty chat. Uh, okay, uh, please, please watch your... Uh, AJ47 is a skilled professional. Please be on your guard. Uh, and then when, when someone is being taken down... Bloody hell. One more down. Come on, do your work better. <laughs> no remorse. <laughs> I mean, it's not even like a... Uh, like, the, the whole earpiece bit is not like totally original. It was grabbed from a past Hitman game. It was in Hitman Blood Money, I think, where you get to... It was a mission about assassinating two people, but if you assassinate one person, you get to hear the other person keep talking to you. And then you just follow them around. So, similar concept. So, the whole bit is that you are exploring the, the club area, knowing nothing what, uh, with no objectives. You don't even know where the target is and, until you, like, go close enough and then hear them over uh, talking to the, the earpiece. And then you say, oh, 
Oh, this is Agent Price, Agent Montgomery. Oh, and then I think it was like they don't show how many to kill, but I th- I think it was like five people, and then and then they just ju- about and then the game no the level ends. They they basically oh okay we we've screwed up. Uh, there's too many casualties. Uh, pull out, pull out, pull out, everybody, run, 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 and then they have. <laughs> if you can catch them in the act, you can basically murder them while they are running away. <laughs> Because apparently, if you revisit the level, they don't just give five targets. I think it was like eleven or ten. So there are extra targets, and then you can plan ahead how how you want to approach the mission. Do you want to kill five targets from here? Or oh, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. So there's a lot of room to like replay and just do your stuff. One one playthrough, I just do a sniper run. I just sit on top of a what you say a water tower. I got three other guys because they are very reachable from the sniper, and they bring the sniper rifle into the club for some reason. I found a way to smuggle it and get the other two and they run. And you can even start, of of course, like every other hitman level, you can start from different locations. But man, Berlin is just great. The fact that they hide all of the stuff, like you don't know what to expect, and then you expected the worst, but then they give you the best. Man, how the turntables? <laughs> like like literally, there's there's a there's a there's a feature. No, there, there's a challenge where you you can be the DJ. And kill two of the agents, and it's mark how the turn tables. I'm kidding you <laughs> not. They know. They know what they are doing. <laughs> how the? T- I I I stop myself from doing that joke in the review because oh my dad's gonna be too corny. Oh no, it's not too corny for him and three is in there. <laughs> Man, the other two levels, chonking. You know how it looks like a cyberpunk ish level with all the neon lights and purplish hues, right? It is a cyberpunk level. What they are one of the target, as like they are doing like, like brain, I don't know brain experiments. They they be <coughs> yeah they be they bring in like hobos who are looking for work, and then they do some tests on those magic chests that kind of look like a cyberpunk style, and yeah not not even cyberpunk tabletop like cyberpunk cyberpunk, generic cyberpunk. And one of the story missions is that you can go to apply as a hobo. You you disguise yourself as a hobo, apply to be tested, and then go in there with the target, and then sit within with in the chair with all those things plugged into your brain, and use that opportunity to murder that guy. Uh, one of uh, is I think the reward is called mnemonic. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, then the other girl is like the other target is like uh have like very is invested in like drone surveillance and stuff so very cyberpunk. And the last level I want to talk about, do, we don't talk about the 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 real final level, but maybe I I'll touch it on a bit. Uh, Mendoza is street. Not only because it's in Argentina, which, as I have discovered, is a very underrepresented, underrepresented locale in video games. So I've seen like Argentinians like very much applauding the inclusion of Argentina in a video game. That's cool to see. Ah, uh, they've already done Kuala Lumpur, so we can't ask more. <laughs> 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 I mean, the closest you get is like they put Singapore and Bangkok in, so we can't ask for more. They've already done Southeast Asia representation. Uh, but the fun bit is that this level is just IO Interactive flexing themselves because they are working on a James Bond game, right? Why not make a James Bond like level? Why not mm. have Agent Forty Seven wear a white tux? Why not have Agent Forty Seven have very specific lines talking about wine in great detail when he tasted it? Why not? <laughs> Man, that level is just flexing. But in terms of level design, like it, it harkens back with a lot of the classic Hitman style levels. Like, oh, there's a location, 
uh, they say they call it a fortress because you need very specific access to there. And then there's another target that's roaming around. Oh, please don't kill Diana, by the way, who is roaming with the target. So if you miss that sniper shot, oops, game over. <laughs> oops. Uh, Hitman 3 is great. Oh yeah, by the way, the last level uh, is also, uh, what you say, it's also a twist. But I don't like the twist because it makes, it reminds me of Hitman Absolution again. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> uh, like, Hitman Absolution on its own is a good game, but it's a terrible Hitman game. If you know what I mean, it's freaking linear. Like linearity <laughs> is okay for a stealth game, but that's not the spirit of Hitman. But I guess for like a final lap, I mean, sure, why not? Because at our uh, uh, the level itself is that you can totally just murder everyone. Problem is, if you just go guns blazing, the co- the combat gunplay is not that good, but on purpose, so... At least you get to use the guns without remorse. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, by the way, I've gone too long, but hear me out. Hitman 3, even though it's not... A, I don't think it's gonna be topping our game of the year list. It can squeak into the top 10 maybe, but I'm not going to rate it that high. But as like a product, as a video game on its own, this is like peak IO interactive right now. They are at their peak. I hope this is not the peak. They can keep climbing higher. They are now recruiting for more people to work on James Bond. I hope that is also good. (laughs) I really hope this is also good as well. (laughs) But hear me out. If now that now that time have I have time to think about it. If James Bond doesn't work out, you know what? Uh, what property that I O can make a video game of? Mm. Is it another stealth game? Hear me out. Hear me out. Dennis the Menace. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Put traps around your neighbor. Make him suffer. I mean, there's, there's already the banana peel thing and the caution wet floor thing. They can totally, there's, you can totally make traps out of all the, all the, you see, the, the environmental stuff. But instead of like literally killing people, it's just comically, literally, uh, comically, literally hit, hurting them. They're not dead. They just got electrocuted. <laughs> They're not dead. They're still alive. That is the menace of Home Alone. <laughs> uh, oh, speaking of Home Alone, they did like a homage to Home Alone before. They did. They did. They did. I forgot, but they did a Home, home Alone for homage for a special mission. I think it's like for cre- a Christmas special or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, for the Christmas. Yeah, I remember that one. It's non, apa, non uh, legally distinct Home Alone, but the two guys are basically the, the two, what is it? The two goons that get tortured by toys and stuff but yeah that's that's the direction they need to go next time <laughs> i'm happy with hitman it's okay you can uh if they don't want to make hitman in another five years that's cool because they've nailed it out of the park this one i'm i'm happy with this game so speaking of uh we did talk about a certain movie, right? Home Alone, right? Yep. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. I think we need to talk. It's been a while since we talk about a movie. We, because we never have a reason for. <laughs> When's the last time we talk about movies? Um, Do we it have? was before... I think it was before one got sent into the Shadow Realm. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. Mm. So... Quite a long while. Okay. The reason why we took a movie because it is, it, because it is a franchise that is actually just talked about three minutes ago. You know, a lot of this small independent franchise called Borderlands, made by, which which actually is currently under the THQ and the lead, or Embracer Group as they are called now. Um. Uh, THQ is basically like their their brother now. They are side adjacent, so 
I mean THQ Nordic is a basic group. But but they are now like think of it like Google with uh oh man I forgot what other things that Google have that are site alphabet yeah alphabet is the big alphabet is the embracer group and then THQ Nordic is Google but then oh X is not under Google right the before this not sure there's there's thing called X or maybe Waymo they are auto- uh, Waymo Waymo, Waymo is not under, under Google alphabet. uh yeah Waymo is not under Google it's under alphabet so they are side they are brothers lah basically sisters mm. sister company you know? So, yeah, <laughs> they're making a movie, and well, we're we're just going to react to their cast because the cat, I think they have already almost completed it, the main cast basically. So, so what what kind of story are they aiming? Is it Handsome Jack? Or, no, no, it's the first one. The first first one. Oh, the generic, the generic ass. Oh, we're looking for uh, the the treasure. <laughs> It's not the fun one like that one. So, like, I understand that there is actually the second movie. So, that, so I'm not sure if they want if it will be a fun watch lah. The original one. I mean, I mean, so here's the thing: game based adaptation rarely works when it comes to the fun <laughs> factor. So. <laughs> CC so, Monster Hunter. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just put your expectations low. And yeah, if if it's bad, yeah, expect it. If it's good, okay, all right. We can finally have an example of a good movie. Yeah. Yeah, by the way, you, you said about cast, casting. Uh, who, who, who's, yeah, like, who are they casting? So, um, I think like the f- the main characters, we have in the original game, there's five main characters and no six. Mm-hmm. We have five playable protagonists. The playable protagonist, young Darkes, is um, Roland and Lilith. For now, the so uh, I think Lilith is played by Kate, Kate Blanchett. Yep. Yes. So, yeah, I was right. Like, okay, Kate Blanchett. I think she was in the Underworld. Is it she? Is it the one young from the Underworld new cheater? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I guess. But is she in the Thor thing more recently? Is it her? See, no. I don't know my vid my video game. Yeah, I don't know yeah, my movies. Is, yeah, she's in. Yeah, she is. Ella, yeah, she's from Thor. Yeah, because I mostly remember her from Underworld. I think that is true as well. Let me check. Uh, while you go on, let me check. So yeah, so that's already interesting because I think she had she can be a good Lilith because she has does have those those characteristic of you know a very Kapunya <laughs> leader. Then we have Tennis, uh, a side character that's played by Jamie Lee Curtis. Dude, Ooh. that is that is interesting. Veteran. Yeah. I think she was in Nice Out there. The latest one, she was in Nice She was pretty good there. And Bole, she can be a snarky doctor scientist. So that's good. Okay, so this is... This are the, uh, the last two. The second two, yeah, Vemang. Interesting choices. I can say is For Roland, it is played by uh, Kevin Hart. Oh man, <laughs> you, you gotta get serious now then. Like Kevin Hart, I think. Uh, yeah, he's more like comedy. That's the problem there. Like the last five movies of his is digital comedies, like Right Along, uh, Central Intelligence, both for the Jumanjis. <laughs> so which are like, that's weird. Very interesting choice. Very like op- opposite. Like I think one got. Because I think Roland gets more funnier in the second. <laughs> yeah, but, so the but first... not how how funny lah. But he's he's supposedly like in the first Borderlands, he's just the stoic guy who only gets uh-huh. happy when he shoots stuff. 
But the second one, like this, the second one is more like you know the awkward leader. You know? So that's even fu- that's better a bit. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I that's already like I'm not sure how that one will go. Tapi alright. The second one is okay. So for claptrap, he will be voiced by a uh, Jack Black. Also, the last movie of his is uh, oh, a Disney yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> his last movie is a Disney, a house with clocks on the wall and both Jumanjis. <laughs> and he took... So I think like, Mac had the... Uh, Mac punya ayat is by far the best. He's now a the Shuringus uh, Jack Black. Uh. Either we're going to like Claptrap or ataupun he's going to be hit now. <laughs> That's not in between. Do we... Uh... Either we like Claptrap more, as in we uh, Claptrap as we redeem, or Jack <laughs> Black will lose his appeal because everybody is associating him with Claptrap. <laughs> I mean, technically, Claptrap has always been the butt of the joke. He is designed to be the butt of the joke, but he's kind of getting aggravatingly annoying. Terrible. Like a Claptrap. <laughs> I guess. Like, this... This is one of the most weirdest choice, though. I mean, the fact that we have a Hollywood Borderlands movie with with Hollywood uh, actors is already baffling me. But I don't know anything yeah, about movies. movies. <laughs> it's like, like, you expect like these movies, which are like the Resident Evil's kind of like B-movie tier. With like one, only one star. And the same as well with like upper uh Monster Hunter it's B movie theater. This is like legit work for some reason. And the best uh, uh, question to us is what is Borderland story? <laughs> <laughs> I swear you want that that Borderland story? Look, if somehow they just adapt the law and characters and the world and then they spin it around in their own Hollywood style, I think it can be like something entertaining. But if for whatever reason they've decided to like follow the plot all along, are you sure you want to do that? Are you sure? Look, there is a, there are enjoyable moments in Borderlands too, but overall, I don't think Borderlands story is something Hollywood adaptable script worthy. Like when compared to uh, the other video game punya production, which is on coming, which is the Last of Us, that I have more more hope and faith than by the, this one, and that one is a mini series. And we don't like the Last of Us. Ah, and we don't like the Last of Us, but we know it will be good because they because HBO can do a good mini series. I feel and like, this one, uh, I feel like they have the better. Jo- they they are showing us more hope for a faithful adaptation of that video game despite we don't like that video game <laughs> I mean people will enjoy it some people will enjoy it outside of us that's okay that's fine it's fine oh my god so what next there is still that okay, that Metal Gear punya, uh, movie that's coming out whenever to what the the Star Wars guy Oscar Isaac, that one also I have like fifty fifty. Due to the fact of he's, he's been stagnant for like what a decade lah sekarang. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's been a while. But you know what? To bring back to the Hitman talk, remember there were Hitman movies. <laughs> Which one? The first one was terrible, but the second one, the second one where which was. Ironically, was shot in Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> so, I have no, yeah, sorry. I have no recollection of whatever the movie is because I've known to stay away from it because it was adapted as like an action title, right? Yeah, like I think like, one of the movies has like one gag about uh, disguising themselves into something. That's it. That's I what I've heard. One point, yeah. Like, 
the the second the first one was terrible like it was too slow the pacing was terrible and macam like, like he was trying to do the origin story so like, oh he used to be like the I I C A wasn't even announced at all it wasn't even noticed for this eh so tapi the second one ni macam like, like we show it on the uh I think they just flip the script for the second one the second one is basically what if you are the target of Age of Forty Seven ah uh, which is a much more better movie. Oh, that's like, how it know? works. Okay. That's uh, okay. Tuffy. Tuffy, that's the caveat. But actually, it follows uh, a bit of uh, human absolution. <laughs> oh, okay. I've taken that back. <laughs> like, the first half, the first half was fine. Like, the first half was fine. Like, oh, we get to see from the viewpoint of a target. What do you know what? Man, uh, and then, it. halfway through... Mm. Oh, the target is actually a girl that is also part of the what, agency dulu. Uh, and it, 47 was actually trying to save her. Uh, okay, nah. Never mind. Man, the, first, <laughs> no, no. The, the first half sounds like the agent 47 everywhere system that I'm all into that. <laughs> yeah, and then the second half, where, when they when they arrived to Singapore, uh, where all the trailers were shot, yeah, that's where everything falls apart. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think I remember that I avoided that particular movie because I know I I could feel it would be terrible, and I said, ah, we just can just play the video game. It's much better. I think it was like around Hitman 2016, isn't it? So I think it's more yeah, recent than I remember. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I think it was it came out the same year as the yeah a year before the the first the new first one. Ah, okay. For before and all right. Yeah, yeah I, so... I, I have no, bo- uh, no horse in this race of <laughs> what video game movies will be good or terrible. But if if it is there, it is there. I'm glad it is being made. <laughs> I don't know what happened to the Monster Hunter movie. <laughs> <laughs> Let the less said about that, the better. <laughs> Belly flop. Yeah, even Sonic is better. Oh yeah, Sonic, Sonic, Sonic is, is technically yeah. Sonic one is campy. Yeah, uh, Sonic one is campy at least. Yeah, of course, someone wants to marry Sonic Shadow the Hedgehog. I remember. Yeah, that was the last hmm. time we talked about a movie. It was last year. Uh, <laughs> Early, uh, the Sonic. I, I, uh, I think it's ngam ngam last year. Like ngam ngam last year <laughs> anniversary. It's around a oh, February. Oh man. Uh, yeah, that one. Yeah, the Sony one I watched. Yeah, it's okay. It's very campy, the good kind. Like yes, I would enjoy watching the sequel. <laughs> uh yeah, I- I'm just waiting for the eventual Sonic Three and Knuckles now. They have to call it Sonic Three and Knuckles. They cannot not call it that. <laughs> hey, just separate the details again. The like second they already, they already one, since we're talking the, about the, movie. Uh, they have already teased the upcoming second one to have tails right on the logo. So yeah, that's cool. Okay, expand the universe, sure. But Sonic 3 and Knuckles, it should be called Sonic Ooh. 3 and Knuckles. You cannot, you cannot. If not, I'm gonna go, oh no. Hmm, so lah. I think like in the past five years, the only two movies yang bagus kan were the Tomb Raider one, which doesn't say as much. <laughs> Tomb Raider. Oh, it was like they adapted the origin story, wasn't it? The ah uh, yeah, from the Crystal Geese. Uh, yes, 2013 one, right? Nah, uh, tapi like toned down a bit, a bit toned down, swap. You know, senses. You cannot have. We cannot uh make a quick time event into a movie. I mean, that's for the better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that that story is definitely movie uh fit for movie. You know, the last two good one is you know, t- uh, Sonic and Tomb Raider, in the span of the last ten years. <laughs> that's how long a good yeah. video game movie is. It's okay, like I'm. I'm not betting that much about whatever comes from from the Borderlands movie. 
I mean, uh, at least it can. I hope it just can be a campy watch as well, despite the star power. I don't mind if it just become a campy watch. But if it suddenly becomes like tears from the borderlands kind of quality, I'm gonna be pretty amazed. <laughs> mm, yeah, that would be nice. Then finger guns battles. <laughs> uh, are we done now? Are we done with the movie? Yeah, I think we are done with yeah. I think we're done with the movie talk now. Uh, well, then so besides apa ni lah, Borderlands. There's also the Mario made by the Minions Mario movie made by the Minions with your own. Oh shoot! <laughs> oh, that that is that is another among under the three among up the three anomalies uh, of the of the bunch basically. Oh, be, be, uh, I I have one more movie to shout out that may lead on lead on to the new speed. Ah, uh, remember the Ratchet and Clank movie? <laughs> yeah, that was a movie, and apparently that that twenty sixteen reboot was supposed to be a tie-in for a movie. Yeah, you know why the story for Ratchet and Clank twenty sixteen didn't work well? Look at the story <laughs> on the movie. <laughs> Man, they, it was that bad. It was it was not bad. It was generic because. I get it. You can't make edgy, uh, edgy animation films, because if you look at Ratchet and Clank, the original it has a lot of like capitalist undertones, as in anti-capitalist undertones, jokes about in uh, lots of idu and those. The fact that the game is called Ratchet and Clank Two Going Commando, for this game, <laughs> and the third game is called Up Your Arsenal, should bring you like red flags by now. I mean, for kids, it's gonna be under the rug. I didn't notice that what it means until like later on. <laughs> But yeah, Rachel and Glenn is like pretty much like polished up. They they stop the dirty stuff. They stop the innuendos. I don't know. I kind of miss the weird innuendos. <laughs> uh. So let's go to the news. The news. news. So, <laughs> again, speaking like Dredge and Clank, have you seen the guy? <laughs> so we have now entered the worst timeline for video game purchases because the new Dredge and Clank is costing us in Malaysia almost three hundred ringgit now. Yep, that is the new normal, man. Uh, <laughs> I hate this new normal. <laughs> we've seen Demon Souls already, three hundred. Which is Spider Man is also three hundred. Yeah, as uh, <laughs> uh, Miles Morales Ultimate Edition is three hundred, which includes the remaster. And three hundred, man. To to put in perspective, how many Big Macs can we buy with three hundred ringgit? Ah, uh, Big Macs is like what twenty ringgit around, or is it more? Fifteen. Till I fifteen. Fifteen for the ala card one. Let's go for ala card. So okay, that's 15 like fifteen ala card. So yeah, three hundred divided by fifteen. Ah, twenty big bag lunches, man. That's and video games are expensive here, and that's why regional pricing is important. Guess, guess we live in Argentina now, <laughs> man. I almost thought about, oh, can we get the Epic Game Store version of Ratchet and Clank so we can get cheaper? I will pay with USD, but cheaper. <laughs> oh, is it coming to PC? Nah, it's not. I almost thought about oh. it, which is weird. It's not gonna go come to on, PC Sony. like for you know... or five years. Come on, PC. come on, Sony. You know you want the extra money. <laughs> but not yet. They want extra money from like... the PS Five. A, a, a console that the controller has more apa? has more owners than the actual console itself. Look, one guy dislike that video on YouTube. You know, we we've, we've established ourselves now. <laughs> we have ang we have angered the play the the soon to be PS Five owners. Man, oh man, it's okay. We can't use the review codes anyway. We don't have a PS Five. <laughs> Uh no, I'm I'm still looking forward to see what people thought things about Ratchet and Clank: A Rift Apart. 
or in Japan, as it called, Ratchet and Clank Parallel Trouble. Parallel Trouble, that sounds better, actually. <laughs> I mean, they cannot translate it but... for part, so Parallel Trouble sounds better. Parallel Toraburu. Parareru Toraberu. Something like that. I've, I've saw one of the logos. But... Okay. It sounds so a next... mouthful to pronounce. <laughs> yeah. But rather so than like, up... uh, Rifato Aparato. <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, the version, uh, the, the girl saying, okay. Uh, in Sao, mm. uh, one of the characters is Alice. So her full name is Alice Synthesis 30. How do you pronounce it in Japanese? My kind of style. God, Arisu Sisusi 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 Yeah. <clears throat> Moving on. Uh, the big news that for the motorsport fans is that EA has confirmed that they have. Well, it is a confirmation that fully a certain electronic arts has bought uh for Code Masters. I think we reported this earlier, like back in December. Tapi has it has been. Oh no, the fireworks! <laughs> yeah, the signaling the the uh, acquisition. <laughs> yeah, that's EA signaling. They have just gotten Code Masters. Oh my God! Please. So Max, see again. Man, the since we didn't cover the whole saga because it was December. Uh, first up, it was Take Two. Uh, that one that uh, wanted to acquire Code Masters. I forgot the numbers, but it was a significant amount. Let's just say that. Um, I think most of, uh the, you could read the lines that they really wanted the F one license. They want the sports license. Tuki have a lot of sports stuff going on, right? That's most likely. And Code Masters are looking to sell anyway. And then not long after that, EA outbids them. I think they offered like 1.3 billion USD, billion with a B. <laughs> a lot. That's a lot of money. A there. lot. <laughs> I mean, for a niche uh, publisher game developer that is now like focused solely on making racing games yearly, 1.3 billion is a lot. How many of that is supposedly for the value of F1? We don't know, but it totally has to do with F1. I don't know. I don't think that EA wanted to buy it for for dirt, for uh, what for uh, cheap. for greed. <laughs> Look, they are uh, okay, then... but it's not one point three billion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're buying for F1. They're yeah, buying F1, that, and then that there's a big money right there, the cash cow. And then another developer for Nifo Speed. Ah. <laughs> uh, Oh yeah, uh, the the really guys, they they are getting WRC licenses as well, right? Yeah, so yeah. that's another money we can slap the EA Sports logo on. Not a big, not a big money, but money nonetheless. <laughs> I think like Dulu, I remember Dulu. They had the V8 supercars license. <laughs> oh, the the Australian supercars championship. Yeah, yeah. I mean, technique. so this. Mm. This is not new to them. <laughs> not new yeah. to them. F1 is not new to them. They used to make F1 yeah. games. It was partly Signosis, and then it went to EA, and then it went back to Studio Liverpool, Sony, and then and then it went back to and then it went to Code Masters. I think that's how it goes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, the the acquisition is not all cash. It's- Partial cash, partial stock. So, still, so, so half. I mean, half I mean, of a billion dollars is still a half, half of yeah. a billion dollars. <laughs> I mean, if you are going technical here, they're not paying full billion. They're paying like half of it. 
a few hundred million, but still a lot of money. That's also yeah. That's a lot of money for for a lice a big ass lice like F one, which man. they sold, <laughs> which they sold back then. Uh, uh, you've seen the 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 financial reports from EA, the recent financial reports. They are talking about oh we gonna flex our marketing muscle. Uh, we're gonna put in live services into the games, mm. the commas uh, games. No. Live services. I can hear Jim Sterling talking about that. Uh, live services. Live service. Man, F1 Ooh. Ultimate Team, baby. Feud. Feud. <laughs> Lewis Hamilton. I can't wait to get my golden Lewis Hamilton for my, my F1 team. My SSR <laughs> Limited Edition 2020. Uh... Uh, Wakanda Forever Post Lewis Hamilton Gold Let's Cup go. Very niche And then Oh uh, What else in the pack you got? You pulled 10 right? Oh the other 9? Uh, all of them one star Lance Rose Oh man Poor boy Lance Rose <laughs> Poor guy Nicholas One star Nicholas Latifi uh-huh. Take it or leave it <laughs> Poor guy He got shafted man I mean it's not. It's right. not that good, but I don't think one star <laughs> level. Man, I just hope uh Liberty Media have some sense to put some limitation on what EA can do. Yeah, because F one fran F one as a franchise is a it's an ownership. It's not like oh, uh, this club, this championship league, uh, is like, quite wide like like FIFA or Madden, whatever. I mean, those guys really want money, but Liberty, they kind of want a good name, in a sense. Hope so. Ooh, uh, I'm, I'm, I, I, I have a bad feeling about this. <laughs> Since they have been pushing, what, the the F1 draft fantasy stuff, right? I think they just oh, yeah, want to yeah. make money. The, fan, the fantasy F1, yeah. Uh, they, they, Makes sense. They're really pushing, like, stuff like, ooh, not just games, but also... Is it a for foresh- is that a foreshadow in the half there? <laughs> I mean they've already like shared those kinds of like ultimate team cards already. I know Code Masters uh from last year's game I already do that, but it's is gonna be much more it's much much more real than we ever expected. Look, that SSL joke might not be even a joke. They're probably gonna monetize the work of forever Lewis Hamilton post picture. Man. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, at this point, we just we can just hope that EA won't take it too far, but they would. It's they a matter would. of who who will stop them. Oh man, we we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, I mean, I hope the Need for Speed, uh, French. Oh no. I hope they don't use frostbite. <laughs> the the engine that literally kills development. Yeah, that Code Masters has built a lot of the like the new tire physics and stuff on their engine. Yeah, their if, ego if they go frostbite, oh man, I don't know what's the disaster gonna be. If they did that. Is totally because they wanted the license. All those what uh transfer skill knowledge are just bullshit. <laughs> oh man, uh, we better move on before it gets the more depressing. Motorsports racing games are getting more more niche as we speak. Oof. Okay, so next up, another bad news, I guess. Um, because. I don't know if it's a good news or bad news. But what, all of the Kin Heart games are coming to PC. Okay, that's good news. But it's on the Epic Game Store exclusively. <laughs> um what Yeah, fifty fifty. Fifty fifty I guess. Yeah, because... the, we take the good and the bad. <laughs> at, at least PC players get to experience Kingdom Hearts now. Man. Have fun going down the rabbit hole. You're gonna experience a simple and clean story. <laughs> All of them the, the are part... now housed under the sanctuary of the Epic Game Store. 
And if please don't think twice about buying the game. <laughs> oh, the price, the price, the price is two, two, three, nine each. Oh, How yeah. many games are that? Four. Okay, you want the breakdown of the games? Uh, you technically buy four of the games. Let me check. The Kingdom Hearts Seed Epic Game Store. There are technically four games. And let me read it out. Okay. First game is called Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 plus 2.5 Remix. And what does it include? Uh, long bullet point. Kingdom Hearts Final Mix. Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories. Kingdom Hearts 358 Days Over 2. HD Remaster Cinematics Only. Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix, Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep Final Mix, and Kingdom Hearts Recorded but only the HD Remastered Cinematic. So, this is the first one that you should get. Like, I mean, just because of the content alone, you have Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 on it. And then you have Kingdom Hearts 2.8 HD Final Chapter Prologue, which includes uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 Dog. Dream, Drop, Distance, HD, Kina Hearts Chi, Back Cover, Just Only the Movie, and King Hunter, <coughs> Kingdom Hearts 0.2, Birth by Sleep, Dash, A Fragmentary Passage, Slash, uh, Dash. So, it's a bit hard, <laughs> but you get the 3DS game, you get that 3DS game. And lastly, you got Kingdom Hearts 3, plus Remind DLC. So that's pretty straightforward. And the Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory uh, musical game. Alright. Uh, catch up? Good. <laughs> uh, essentially, just get the first one, which is $49.99 USD. Uh, apparently, it's still using Square in its pricing. So even with digital pricing, it's still that expensive because they didn't adjust it. Ah... Uh, just get the first one and then figure out if you want to play more. Kind of hard. The only game where you can see Mickey Mouse contemplating life. <laughs> oh, yo. Okay, so next. Oh, yo. Goofy, Goofy wishing. Goofy <laughs> wishing the darkness would go away. <laughs> Ew, so? Okay. Speaking of darkness, um, earlier in in the week, uh, CD Projekt Red got hacked by uh, a bunch of unnamed hackers, and more some of it that has been stolen were source codes of their uh, games, which is The Witcher and Cyberpunk, and apparently, the cost of these source codes is. Uh, unofficially, uh, from what I've read, 1 million in Bitcoin, which is a lot of Bitcoin there. 1 million BTC. Oh. One... 1 million dollar reduced. Yeah, 1 million dollars in Bitcoin, basically. Like, that is oh. a lot of money. 1 million dollars in it's Bitcoin. It's not 1... I thought 1 million yeah, Bitcoin, not one... which is... Which is, hold on, wow. hold on, how many is it? Is it 47 billion? Hold on, a hundred, that's all, hold on, hold on, I'm counting the, <laughs> I'm counting the digits. 3, 6, 9, 11 digits. USD. Yeah. Tapi still, like, there is a lot of money for, so, okay. To the guy, to the Russian fellow who bought <laughs> the sauce code to a game which you, which you have just bought, now what? Are you going to make a you a Slav Jeng when you have of Cyberpunk? If so, uh, call us. Jokes on <laughs> you. Witcher is already Slav Jeng. <laughs> yeah. Mo- I I mean the the only value I see them getting the code is to I'm not sure Gwent from Breaker. I mean it's not even multiplayer. Gwent they gave like, it for free. Like Gwent they gave it for free. That's why. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to, let's say, reverse engineer, why are you going to do a hacked game for multiplayer? Whatever. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't see the point. Let's say they buy, okay. They're going to get the codes and stuff, but... Okay. <laughs> I 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, what they, are... they, they, they already released the modding tool, so I mean, the public can decompile Cyberpunk and Witcher. You know, we see it. <laughs> the, the, the unofficial Cyberpunk mod with some Skyrim. <laughs> And, yeah, uh, uh, unfortunate for CD Project. That's that's yeah. Sucks. This is the good, the no good bad week continues for them. Yeah, this this one we can't blame on them. There is you don't you don't want to hear stories like this, even with whatever they have done before. It sucks. Oh man, why are we in the downfall? Because the next news is also depressing. <laughs> Oh yeah. So Warner Brothers have done the the big oof and bought off a patent for their very interesting Nemesis system. Well, not anymore. No, not interesting anymore. Ah uh, man, you know how we kind of wonder why people don't you don't try and make their own Nemesis system. Well, apparently, like five years before, therefore, uh, Warner Brothers have been attempting to patent this. So I guess some devs might have got the uh, cool feet doing this. So either that, or they didn't prioritize AI as something that that video games should focus on. Because you know, people like graphics. Graph. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame. But I hope that there are workarounds that can still allow, uh, like AI systems to interact, kind of like Nemesis system, but not exactly like that. Because I think the 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 pattern itself has been described like the way that they've patterned the whole hierarchy thing, which is integral in the Nemesis system. But if you remove that, you can still make like decent. Uh, AI interactions like you've seen, like we've seen it in Watch Dogs Legion. That is technically a, an adjacent and emergency system, a friend system because it keeps on tracking of the APCs we want to play. So ne- can wait for the, upper the frenemy system then. Yeah. I mean, if all else fails, just put the X everywhere system and call it a day. I'm happy. <laughs> the Majima everywhere system is not really AI. It's just a marketing name. I like that name so much. Just slap it everywhere. It's fine. It works. <laughs> Hold on. It is technically an AI. Uh, no, I don't think so. Because it's it kind of like it can also plop in re- uh, randomly. During and on the open world, but it's not really an AI system that it in the level of the Nemesis system. Still strong name. Strong name. So, and lastly, we want to uh speak about an eulogy for a fallen comrade, which actually can can you can you is. The writing was on the wall when they first launched. Way back in 2019. <laughs> Google Stadia uh... is dying. Is it dying or has he died? Mm, that's the question right now. Uh, it's it's hanging off a cliff and just <laughs> wait someone to to press on their hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. stomp. <laughs> Man, they've shut down their first party efforts. Stadia Games and Entertainment Studio. Which supposed to be the team that make first party games. So far, they haven't shipped any first party games. I mean, okay, well, they they announced their first party studio last year. I think the ex the like the the executives up in Stadia considered okay, we gotta make a game one year. Well, no. <laughs> that's how it works. Wait, that does. That's not how it works. Gotta take at least three. I mean, that's like full production, not counting pre-production. Probably another two years. And they aiming triple I mean, A level. It's not like indie. Nope. 
Yep. I mean, tengok Amazon. Amazon, their their gift has published, unpublished, and died <laughs> in, I mean, in Am- the span of three weeks. I mean, technically, Amazon <laughs> is also terrible as well. Yeah, we, as well. We've seen the reports. They have a very, a very problematic leader at the top of the food chain there. <laughs> that doesn't know how that doesn't know how game works. What go off? <laughs> uh, I mean, the game's prob decent, but they do not market it. They did not market it. And like, what the hell? I was it? like, you guys are the have all the data, the money, everything, and then they were like, okay, we're gonna release a game. Wait, what? <laughs> all the we, data we in the world will game. not save. No marketing, from... whatever. And then the props. Okay, we're gonna pull it back. Oh, Just know, went back then, to the womb. You know what? Unbirth. And then... <laughs> <laughs> imagine, lah, like, imagine. Like, Amazon was struggling. And then Google said, like, we can do better. And they did not. <laughs> and weirdly enough, uh, the, big, the, be- the best of the tech brew companies that are in the video game space is right now, Apple Arcade. Because they just ah, want, like... because they just want it as a small thing on the side. Yeah, it just curates indie games, put it as an exclusive, put it as a subscription. But if they want to leave the subscription after that, go on. But we've promoted it on our platform, a platform we cultivated with very loyal and a lot of users, and the games are decent. They don't make their own games, but they have pick the right ones. Yeah. I mean, okay, here's the thing with Apple. They know how to attract customers to give them money. They, they, they do it right. They know how to treat their customers. I know they, they probably shit on the, the hardware side when it comes to fixing, but when it comes to user experience, just hip top. Okay. It's not like the Amazon, the Google and stuff. Uh, no, no, no. The op- the open source community in general also have the same problem. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, as much as I don't like Apple, we are gonna give credit to Apple Arcade that yeah, looking like a good service. Even though they yep. don't aim high, but when they target it, they got it right. <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, so- sometimes they are, they are late or maybe they don't give a lot. But they know their limits rather than shooting for the star. They say, okay, we're going to give this much. So maybe expect more, but not now. So we're going to do it right. But yeah, and usually they nailed it. So like Google stay there, oh, we're going to do this, do this, do this, and then, ah, uh, sorry guys, we, we pull back. <laughs> and, I mean, Stadia will live on as something like a tech, tech, what you what you call it like a tech technology what? I'm looking for that word technology that powers like other services for other publishers that want to use it yeah so basically it's called, white, it's called white labeling uh, uh, is it kind of like the the whole Gaikai thing if you guys remember uh, not sure so okay I, I think it's gonna be like this okay hmm. uh, it's gonna be like AWS for gaming oh just so, the back okay end, right? hmm. Yeah, we're going to provide backend. You do whatever you want in terms of marketing. How do we implement and stuff? We're going to give the infrastructure and everything. You just pay enterprise costs and then how you market to your user, it's up to you. Uh, yes. So, so definitely like Gaikai, if you guys remember around 2013, around that time, there's a service that lets you stream game demos, but just demos. Uh... And eventually, that service got bought into PlayStation and it became PS now. Interesting how the way world, the world works. We're going backwards. <laughs> the business model is getting going backwards. backwards. We're evolving, but backwards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, on that note, Amazon is having their own streaming, streaming stuff as well. Oh god, Google, can you leave? <laughs> Can you continue your mm-hmm. stadia? No, it's a shame. And I think, yeah, it's a damn shame. The whole promise about integrating stuff like uh, 
like oh you just share a link and you get your saves <laughs> or you just share a link or you can get into the game or you just watch some guy playing on YouTube oh you can queue in to play that multiplayer segment those ideas are cool but not with this tech that nobody not everyone in the world has access to yep I mean or yeah I prob it's probably all doable but they don't have enough uh critical mass when it comes to the user base to justify burning money for that <laughs> uh yeah i mean who who had the bright idea of actually selling the games like uh with a 60 dollar value similar to yeah. physical games and then and then because it's only digital only if whatever happens to stadia bye bye <laughs> Yeah. All those purchases, bye bye. <laughs> Man, fifty bucks gone. Yeah. Look, also, uh, Google have a bad reputation of pulling the plug on their projects. So, even from day one, people are already skeptical whether Google will still continue. Because for Google and Alphabet in general, once they see, they say the writing on the wall that this thing is not gonna work, they gonna pull the plug. Easily. I mean, <laughs> I mean, they should have done it day one, by the way. <laughs> But no, no. Oh, let's give it one year. No, okay. Uh, okay. We we've got the one year. All right, all right, all right. We can do this. Let's. Uh, we're gonna build momentum until year two. Let's see. We're gonna do this, guys. We're gonna do this. Year two. Oh, plug, pull. Hey, hold on. We've don't even even started yet. We just started the momentum. We just jumped. We haven't fallen yet. You haven't seen where we fall into. Ah, sorry, bye. And now it's hanging on the cliff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be like uh, Scar and Mufasa. The king is dead. Long live the king. <laughs> uh, no, the the fun bit is that you don't have to bury Stadia. It's already in the cloud. Yeah. <laughs> You have to get rid of the cloud now. It's already, <laughs> it's already in the cloud. Ah, is that we have to? Is that the note we have to end on? Oh man, poor Stadia. Mm, yeah, man. Hopefully, the next time we talk about Stadia, it will be the premature death. Ah, <laughs> uh, man, what a. What an episode! And as you have all been accustomed to, it's time to discuss the thumbnails. Uh the great press. <laughs> We need to put that. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, great press. Numbers, a lot of numbers. Oh, yeah. big, big numbers. Numbers. Oh, yeah. numbers. <laughs> We t- did talk about big numbers. I I remember that I did eleven okay. figures. God damn. Big okay, okay. Not not numbers or just just the word big number. <laughs> I mean, numbers. I mean, numbers go brr. If you can do both. I mean, uh, numbers can be can be the title even. Ah <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, division two. What should I put? What division two? Ah. Uh, uh, I don't know. Yeah, big numbers the, lah. The division two is numbers. the big numbers. <laughs> big numbers. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, and then and then the headstone stadia. And then clap clap for no reason. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Deep fake clap trap as black jack black. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. That's perfect. Oh uh, man, I'm gonna put an smiley edgy forty seven at the side just to just to make it more absurd. Yeah, let's go with that, man. Uh, and there we go. Let's start with. Uh, let's start. We're gonna end it with promoting the social links. Daniel, what do you have in store? All right. So you can follow me on Twitter dot com at flaky f l four k y, and I have a review coming out. Well, by the time this episode is out, it'll be out as well for a certain game called The Medium. And spoiler alert: it's pretty good. Anan, uh, I'm Anan. Uh, you can find me at Twitter. Uh, 
Oh, wait, yeah, the username, Twitter, drop near DR4UPN1R, DR4UPN1R. And for new stuff, ah, oh, yeah, you 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 guys uh, can probably guys wait for review for some gaming gear that we got. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. Yep. Uh, it's been some time since we got uh, like gaming gears, uh, uh, except for laptops. So, yeah, just uh, wait for the for the publish publish articles <laughs> yeah Mac? uh 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 all oh, oh, oh no come on there, there's air in me hold on okay okay uh the air has aborted somewhere <laughs> that's that's a weird timing uh almost boop i and i've been amiro macronos ashraf m-e-c-k-r-o-n-o-s and there is what i Do I have a review? Yeah, I do have a review. Also, a hardware review. Essentially, I'm using the hardware right now. If you can hear this, mm. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. that's that. This is <laughs> that. This is some new microphone that's gonna be reviewed later on KMMeters.com. Stay tuned for that. Uh, if you do speak Bahasa, either Bahasa Melayu, Bahasa Malaysia, I do not know which is the official connotation right now. We just say Bahasa. <laughs> If you do speak that language, uh, you can hop over back to Gamer Malaya. We have been putting in some side hustles for a show where we try games in under 20 minutes. Well, I said that Hitman 3 episode, but yeah, under 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> go and check that out if you understand the language. And there you go. That's Dyer.Love, the Gamer Matters podcast. And uh, be sure to check your bottles for body parts. <laughs> true, true.